you may be wondering what I'm doing out here at my Ultimate 3D Printer Bench instead of in there at my workbench. The answer sits right here behind me. It's the brand new Creality Halo Light, their brand new large format resin printer. It's just too big for me to unbox in there at my workbench, so I'll be doing it right out here. That's right, it's the Halo Light. The, the Hallet Light. The Halot. The... <clears throat> Gonna be doing a lot of 3D printing. <laughs> I am extremely excited to rip into this box and get to that juicy, juicy 3D printing that you know is coming in this video. But before I do that, I want to sit down at the workbench where I'm nice and comfy and tell you a little bit about the specs and features on this one that got me excited about it before it even showed up at my door. Come along, won't ya? Walk this way. My first resin 3D printer was the Creality LD2H. It's actually still sitting right here next to me, and I've used it to produce a whole bunch of super high-quality prints that you've seen on this channel, including most recently my miniature Proton Pack. I love the quality of prints that I get off of this thing. So when Creality announced that they were launching the brand new Halo Light with a higher resolution screen, significantly larger build volume, and a bevy of new features, of course I was excited. Now, to be clear, Creality did send this machine to me at no cost to me for evaluation purposes, but no money has exchanged hands, and all opinions I'm about to give you are mine and mine alone. Now, with that out of the way, let's get talking about the specs and features that make me excited to have this machine sitting right out there on my bench. <laughs> what are the specs? All right, let's talk turkey. This guy has got an 8.9-inch 4K monochrome LCD on it that should be capable of some outstanding detail on its prints and also a large build volume, as I mentioned. How large? Why, just 192 by 120 by 200 millimeters. If you're wondering, is that good, is that bad? Well, that is one and a half times the build volume that I've got on my LD2H, and at double the resolution. Oh, I like that very much. This machine also sports a monstrous 64-bit ARM-based processor. And you are right, that does sound like overkill, but you'll hear no complaints from me. To cap it all off, we've got an ample 5-inch full-color touchscreen up front, and this machine is able to print either from a USB thumb drive, tethered to a computer via USB A to B cable, or via Wi-Fi using Creality's app. More on that in a little bit. Very mysterious. Setup on this thing was relatively straightforward and took no real effort on my part, except of course for the fact that it is a little large and a little heavy, and I was setting it up at about chest height. Now that assembly is complete, it's time for first prints. And, and I don't want my first print on this machine to just be a calibration or test print that I just go, ooh, looks like it prints great, and then throw it in the garbage. I want it to be something awesome. I want it to be a keeper. I want to swing for the fences. So my first print is actually going to be two prints. It's going to be a Luke Skywalker bust by Photos Mint, as well as the Destroyer armor from Thor, also from Photos Mint. And that is going to be at 195 millimeters tall it is going to be enough to pretty much fill that build volume once they throw the supports on there. 
That is a real test. Now, how did they print? The answer is pretty darn well. I'm going to start off by talking about that destroyer armor from Thor, and it looks spectacular. I've got super, super high resolution, sharp details on here, especially when you look at the spikes. Those things are legitimately sharp. If you want to know just how sharp, I actually bought a USB microscope for ultra close-ups. Look at those things. That is insane. I love the way that that came out, and I'm looking forward to finishing this thing in the future. Now, to be clear, I did have a little bit of difficulty getting the supports off of there, and I left a couple of little remnants behind, so I will need to do some sanding on this thing before I get into paint. But, you know, follow me for a future video where I will put this thing together and throw it on the shelf. Now, the other print was the Luke Skywalker bust, and it came out well for what it is. Here's what I'm saying. Uh, I decided to play around a little bit in the Halo Box software that Creality sends with this machine. And I think I made some mistakes in the slicer. So first I started by hollowing out the print, and then I decided to drill two holes in the bottom. I didn't want it to be just entirely full of resin. I want to be able to get that resin out of there through these little drain holes. The problem is, somehow, when I added supports, it added supports inside the model. There were also some significant gaps in the model from the slicer. It printed flawlessly. There's no trouble there. But there were some weird little gaps in the print, and it wasn't manifold in the end. It's not waterproof. Now, to be clear, this does also ship with a copy of Lychee Box, and I might recommend using that instead. I just thought, what the heck, let's give it a shot. And, well, 13 hours later, this is what you see. Wait, wait, how long is this going to take? Oh, did I forget to mention that this was 13 hours of printing? Because this was 13 hours of printing. It's why when you see the time lapse, you'll notice that halfway through, I throw on the red cover. It's because I was running out of nighttime, and this thing was sitting right there by an open window, and I didn't want this resin to be curing just out there in the open. The orcs of Mordor have no lot of daylight. I promised you I was going to talk about that Wi-Fi and app connectivity on this thing, and I tried, but it turns out I have had no luck getting Wi-Fi operational on this guy. Technically, it does connect to my network, but then when I try to utilize the Wi-Fi, either to connect to it via Creality Cloud or to do a firmware update on the machine via Wi-Fi, it tells me I'm not connected and forces me to connect again, which then continues the vicious cycle over and over again. Now, I do hope that this is going to be repaired in a relatively short period of time here with a firmware update. For me, I'm not able to go out and download a firmware update from Creality's website because, well, it still isn't released yet. This machine is not commercially available yet. So what are you going to do? There's not much I can do. Typically, you make some trade-offs when you choose to go resin printing versus filament printing. You get that outstanding surface detail. You get phenomenal quality of prints, but at the expense of size. You get teeny tiny little stuff. Boy, uh, not so with the Creality Halo Light. This destroyer is super highly detailed and the size of my face. And despite what the internet says, I have a normal size face. It's not teeny tiny. This is normal. So... Get that out of your brain. Who told you that? That's going to be it for this video. So I'll tell you what, why don't you go ahead and like this video, throw a subscribe my way, and comment down below what you want to see me print next on this massive monstrous resin printer. Until then, I'll see you around. Bye. I would like to talk about that at my workbench, though, so I can take a load off my hungry dogs. I don't know what that means, but those are my feet. My, my feet are hungry dogs. Hungry dog feet. Got hot dog feet. It's a medical condition, and I don't know what to do about it. That was a journey. We just went on a journey together. Okay, I should probably do this again. Right and better. Join me in my workbench. At my work, in my work, in the work, in the work. Get in the work. Gotta put on shoes. Nah, no shoes. Ready to go. Here we go.